Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, it is May 27th, 2020, 1.55 p.m. West Coast time here in California, where it's another hot one uh, uh, up here in Northern California, looking at 102 degrees right now. We're supposed to be up around 105 today, uh, and that's not good. So I got a bunch of fans here, keeping everything cool. Just can't be having electronic stuff overheat, that's for sure. Anyway, I want to talk about a little event that's going on up there in the Pacific Northwest, uh, just west of Seattle. I'm sure a lot of you folks have heard about it. It's the Slow Slip Trimmer uh, that goes on up there roughly about every 13 to 14 months or so on a pretty regular occurrence there. Um, although we do see um, Slow Slip Trimmer happen on other parts of the Cascadia Subduction Zone, uh, you know, throughout the year. It, there's actually one going on right now there in uh, central looks like northern Oregon area uh, this occurrence here occurs on a uh, little bit different setup here and we'll go ahead and get into that here in a second I just want to show you guys the uh, trimmer that's been taking place today just today a massive amount of uh, of activity being picked up once again in the state of Washington there in the Pacific Northwest also down into parts of uh, northern Oregon there looks like west of Portland all these earthquakes or trimmer if you will uh, slow slip movement being detected by uh, different equipment than you would for example for normal earthquakes but all this activity occurring on the Cascadia subduction zone there uh, let's go hold on one second here go ahead and zoom in to this region here and show you guys there's just a massive amount of movement going on here along the Pacific Northwest and this like I said is just today I do want to go back here and see if I can set up um, a couple different days here hold on one second if it's gonna let me it might it may not hold on so we're gonna go with uh, we're gonna go from the 19th to the 27th and this is probably going to explode here. Hold on. Probably so many of them, it's unreal. Okay, so there's quite a bit here. We're looking at at least, at least total 2,036 epicenters. So ba basically, technically, if you look at it, over 2,000 earthquakes. But in the trimmer department, in a slow slippage, not a sudden jolt or any type of... Uh, major movement if you will a uh, little interesting activity up there um, like I said a lot of people don't know about it and then a lot of people do it's the uh, it, it occurs roughly about 13 to 14 months or so every year it seems like and I believe roughly around last year or sometime around last year I uh, covered this same specific uh, topic here I'm going to go ahead and bring up, uh, let's see which one did I want to bring up here. I guess this is the one here. I'll go ahead and put this back into window view so we can see. I kind of wanted to show you guys, explain to you guys a little bit about what's going on out here. Uh, I don't want to make it too small there. I'm going to make it readable, right? Uh, this is from the PNSN network, which is the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, which monitors the trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. And this here, this just an example, just... There's lots of articles on it, lots of different ways people try to explain it. Uh, I'm just going to go by what these folks uh, are talking about here. So slow slip episodes affecting southern British Columbia and northern Washington have been occurring every 14 months or so uh, since at least the 1900s. The PNSN monitors the non-volcanic trimmer associated with slow slip and has deployed additional size uh, meters from time to time to record uh, estimated trimmer events to gain insight into the process and into the stresses that eventually will lead to the region's next major earthquake. So as you're sitting out there in the beautiful town of Seattle drinking your latte at Starbucks, you know, downtown, um, if it's that time and that big 9.0 hits up there, it's not going to be a pretty sight. Many different techniques are used to study this phenomenon. Phen phenomenon. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, it's hot, it's the heat. The two primary areas of research the PNSN and related researchers are involved in includes one, a semi-automatic, okay, 
Uh, let's go ahead and read into that. Uh, episodic tremor and slip periods in northern Washington have been individually studied over a number of years. Uh, okay, I want to let's go back into a different one here, a different uh, part here. So, every 14 months or so, a series of small tremors migrate north from the Kitsap Peninsula to the southern end of the Vancouver Island. To seismologists, that means a regular slow slip event is happening. It also means there's slightly there's a slightly higher risk of a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. And I've always thought this: when you have all this tremor moving around in a certain part of uh, the Cascadia subduction zone on a large scale, that's obviously has to be an increase uh, in the percentages of a major Cascadia earthquake there. Uh, but don't fret, okay? So they claim slow slip, also called epis episodic tremor and slip, or ETS, has not started here. In, okay, this is from last year. This article was. But seismologists has been, have been seeing bursts of tremors from British Columbia through western Washington in recent months. Uh, but those tremors have jumped around, which is not characteristic of slow slip season. But we are in it now, obviously, from that map I just showed you. Uh, Pacific Northwest Seismic Network seismologist Steve Maloney, Malone, Maloney said that there are several slow slip events up and down the Cascadia Fault Zone. The slow slip in Oregon, which occurs every 22 months, has begun. Uh, okay, but we are obviously seeing the activity right now uh, in the uh, Washington region there with that map. Let's go ahead and check out. I think I got those mixed up, but that's okay. Uh, so basically what is going on uh, a little example of what's going on here is that uh, the Cascadia subduction zone. Oh, hold on a second here. Uh, the Cascadia subduction zone runs from Northern California up to Vancouver Island. Uh, so deep underground, the Juan de Fuca plate is sliding eastward underneath, which is called subducting, the North American plate, which sits to the east. The plates are locked together in some spots. At some point, the pressure will be too much and the two plates will spring apart. When that happens, the Pacific Northwest will be rocked by up to a magnitude 9.0 earthquake. Uh, during the slow slip season, right? This is the Juan de Fuca plate tectonic. Juan de Fuca tectonic plate stalls and moves westward. So this is opposite of of what it's normally doing right which is subducting to the east so as this happens as you want the fuca plate stalls and moves backwards if you will westward that puts further stress and strain on the already locked cascadia subduction zone uh, the small tremors we see in the puget sound are an indication of that change in plate movement there are slow slip events at different times during the during the year uh, near Northern California and at the north end of Vancouver Island in addition to the Oregon and the Puget Sound events here. So as we see on this map right here, you guys can see the activity um, that is taking place in Washington, obviously, right? That's that section right there that kind of wants to move westward, right? Moving westward, backwards, back and out of that subduction, subduction zone, if you will, uh, while at the meantime including adding pressure into the other parts of the Cascadia subduction zone. So I have, I've always liked to stay on guard and keep an eye an eye out, all right? Be prepared for any possible larger earthquake activity here in the Pacific Northwest. Now this seismic activity has been occurring, like I said, over the past at least 10 days. And we're not out of the woods yet. You know, just, just today, let's go back to just today. Uh, right there. That's not what I want it to do. Okay, that's kind of acting. Now we're being a little weird. Oh, I think I know why, because I, I got the box uh, open here. Um, let's go ahead and remove that real quick and search. Show you this here. Well, not for sure what happened to it here kind of acting weird but I know there's more than that that's yesterday's map go back to today's okay that's really strange but 
the activity is continuing folks um, even today on the the uh, real-time trimmer map and it uh, looks like just yesterday 264 epicenters in that area that we were just talking about there uh, with that uh, Juan de Fuca plate kind of backing out if you will uh, from the subducting area moving westward instead of downward underneath the North American plate which is to the east it's just an act it's a it's a strange sequence of events out there you know but uh, I think scientists are slowly understanding it but we've at least we haven't I haven't seen a major quake out here along the Cascadia subduction zone that was back in 1700 none of us uh, were here to document any of it uh, so there's a lot of what ifs and uh, what takes place before something like that happens and I think the Cascadia subduction zone um, to monitor it and to watch it is to watch all of these slow slip trimmers that's been going on here uh, in that part of Washington there with the Juan de Fuca plate. I think that's an area to uh, pay close attention to when this happens. So it's still ongoing folks um, and it doesn't look like it's letting up yet. Uh, this goes on, it could go on for a couple, couple weeks or so. Obviously it has with the uh, past 10 days of activity showing uh, quite a bit of movement up there. Uh, in the uh, in the Cascadia subduction zone so th the best thing you can do folks is just be prepared no matter what um, it's always good to have an earthquake plan looking at the surface quaking up here you can go ahead and zoom in here one day uh, let's go ahead and bring this back to seven days 2.5 and above here And, and zooming in up here to the Pacific Northwest, while all that movement and activity is ongoing, right, below the surface, which is way, way, way down there, uh, we are not seeing a lot of surface quakes here at all. None. Zip zero. Which is a good thing. Uh, there's been a couple smaller quakes up here, in, uh, down here, I should say, in Northern California. Looks like a 2.5 and another smaller one there a couple days ago, 2.6. Activity in Idaho is still continuing, but uh, unassociated with the trimmer at the moment, I believe. Uh, but there's still, I believe there's a lot of pressure being applied out here along the West Coast. And I think with this increase in trimmer, that we should definitely be on guard for potentially uh, a larger surface quake out here. One day, all magnitudes once again here very minimal surface quaking up here looks like there's some micro quakes in the Washington area around looks like Mount uh, which Mount is that Rainier right there looks like there might be one exactly right on top of that area right at, right at the top of the summit a little micro quake point one nothing to write home to grandma about and uh, another smaller one well to the south but uh, definitely a little quake there at the summit looks like and once again no surface quaking over there towards Seattle which is good sometimes uh, you know we don't have to have a full-blown rupture of the Cascadia subduction zone to create damage uh, or have a large earthquake a lot of times inland uh, we see these deep earthquakes and they can be rather large six to seven uh, but well down in there in the uh, Cascadia subduction zone that's further down than the locked section. They happen, uh, it seems like periodically, actually more than the, uh, the full ruptures, which is a good thing. Looking at Idaho earthquake activity today, pretty, you know, it hasn't really changed from last night. Still looking pretty active. And I think the hot spot for right now is indeed the Nevada earthquakes there, continuing with their massive amount of quakes there folks major amount and this is just a one day all magnitudes 312 earthquakes here within this region I'm kind of curious are you let's go back the last at least seven days I think we did this last night let's go ahead and check again seven days all magnitudes here I'm sure it's well over 2,000. I think a 2,000 something last night was a number. Uh, hopefully it doesn't burn my computer down. It shouldn't, but you never know. 2,210. And that's just, uh, that includes some of this activity over here towards Mono Lake. 
uh, in uh, Mammoth Lakes region. But still a massive amount of quakes here, folks. Seven days. If we could go back the last 30 days, all magnitudes, I guarantee you we would probably be looking at over six to 7,000 earthquakes uh, in this region of Nevada following that 6.5 that struck some time ago uh, just northwest of Tonopah there. Very interesting area. I went out there and checked it out um, over the weekend and it was pretty cool to see. I only felt one earthquake down there, a little small one that kind of jolted the car a little bit. Other than that, I really didn't uh, feel anything else besides all the bumps in the roads. Let's go ahead and bring this back one day all magnitudes here. That takes a that's a lot on there. There's a quite a bit of quite a bit there. Okay, maybe it's not gonna want to. That's okay. I'll get rid of you. Oh there we go. So now it wants to work. Okay. Let's go over here to the globe real quick, folks. A couple um, interesting earthquakes there overnight. Some large earthquake activity out there. Uh, just west of the Fiji Islands region, um, 6.1 magnitude, I believe, is what they had there. Let's see if I can bring that back down. Yeah, you had 6.1. And I'm pretty sure there was two 6.1s, right? Let me see if that was the case. I thought there was. At least the USGS sent me... Um, notification in regards to two quakes there at a 6.1 magnitude but we'll go ahead and check that out real quick we'll um, zoom over there and see what these folks are going to state here on a list scale Vanuatu, right just south of that region there port villa yeah it looks like that was a mistake there I only see one 6.1, but nonetheless, pretty large cluster of quakes there in the region that could see a much larger quake. So, uh, looks like they had a couple fours and even a five pointer prior to that 6.1, with uh, some more fives following that. Wouldn't doubt it, these guys are in an in, uh, in area for a, a little bit larger quake here pretty soon. Or at least up here to the north. So anyway, folks, um, yeah, I just wanted to touch basis with the uh, with the activity going on up in Seattle. You know, a lot of people don't hear about it, um, but it's a good area to watch and monitor every 13, 14 months as this gets pretty crazy up there. A lot of activity going on along the Cascadia subduction zone with the Juan de Fuca plate and the uh, the weird westward movement that it takes at that time and uh, like I said scientists believe that it does increase the likelihood of uh, a quake larger quake on the Cascadia subduction zone but you know a small percentage not a definite guarantee no prediction but it's something to monitor and watch as we go through the uh, through that uh, couple weeks of activity. Anyway, folks, I'm gonna jump off here, uh, um, go outside and do some yard work here in the 102 degree weather. And we'll talk to you guys a little bit later on with the earthquake update later on this evening. So stay safe, stay cool, and uh, have a good day.